students. Our topic for today is the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War is a controversial subject. It has been called a number of things. Um, the unwinnable war, the quagmire. One of, one of our historians has referred to it as America's suicide attempt. I think you have that reading uh, on our website. Ronald Reagan referred to it as a noble cause. So you can see it's, it's a controversial subject. There's a number of viewpoints on it. And because of that, it makes it an ideal subject for our consideration. So, when did it take place? It, uh, officially, it started with the Tonkin Gulf Resolution in 1964 under President Johnson. But in order to really understand it, you have to go way back for the background. Briefly, it begins, we can begin where uh, Japan invaded and conquered, it's going all the way down Southeast Asia on its way to the Philippines, it invaded in the World War II uh, invaded Vietnam and conquered it. And by the way, this was ultimately, you can say, what brought the U.S. into World War II because the U.S. didn't approve of Japan's hostile aggression, applied economic sanctions. Japan then retaliated and that brought about Pearl Harbor and the U.S. then entered the war. The background then is after the war and during the peace treaty, it was thought that France should be reinstated with colonial oversight there. France did recognize the northern government, the, nor the northern part of Vietnam, which was a communist regime under Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh had been hanging out in Moscow for years, so he was a communist. He was also an anti-colonialist. The South was to be pro-Western. Uh, the French lost that war despite some U.S., a lot of U.S. economic backing and was defeated at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in 1954. The Geneva Accords then settled that that war that the French lost and officially recognized the division of North and South Vietnam, Vietnam at the 17th parallel. This is analogous to what happened in Korea with the division being at the 38th parallel. So we've got the 17th parallel. North Vietnam is going to be communist and pro-Russia, pro-China, pro-Red China. Pro and the South, under Sigmund Rhee, is going to be pro-West. Oh, I don't mean Sigmund Rhee, that's Korea. I mean uh, DN, uh, DM, Premier DM. In the North, of course, you've got Ho Chi Minh. So, that's the background. I, so we've got the, the, the Vietnam War story actually covering four presidents. Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, LBJ Johnson, and Nixon. So Kennedy committed the first troops as advisors. Eisenhower didn't commit troops, but he had this idea of, or was very cognizant of the threat that the communists posed in Southeast Asia. And referred to the domino theory. Would, would if, if, if communism were allowed to spread, would it ultimately end up in the Philippines, take over, take over Indochina, even Thailand? Um, a likely possibility. Eisenhower was also, though, conflicted because he said it would be a terrible mistake, a tragic mistake, to get involved, for the U.S. to get involved in a land war in Vietnam. Kennedy commits troops, advisors. 
uh, 7,000 at first, and by the time he, um, well, he's assassinated, LBJ comes, comes in, finishes out the term, and by 1964, during the election period, we've got um, twice that many, three times that many um, troops in Vietnam. Ironically, that 1964 election between Lyndon Bain Johnson and Goldwater, Goldwater was portrayed as the warmonger that was going to bring the, the World War III about. Johnson, though, the, this is the irony, was the one who escalated that war terrifically, and by the end we had thousands of soldiers, troops there. Well, I'm not very good with remembering figures, but anyway, he escalated it a lot. And um, the way LBJ prosecuted this war was that he wanted to micromanage it. He wanted to micromanage the war from the Oval Office. He didn't trust his military advisors, and this caused trouble. If you read a source such as H.R. McMaster's Dereliction of Duty, he's, he's very critical of the way LBJ conducted this war because uh, pilots would go out with their bombing raid with, inst with instructions to hit a specific target, a military target in North Vietnam. As they approach the target, it, clouds come over, they can't hit the target, they turn around and come back. The next, uh, the next day, when they're out on their raid, they have a clear view of the target, but they have no authorization from the White House. It has to come directly from the Oval Office. So even though they have a clear shot at this military target, they don't take it. So this sort of um, limitation of the military was, was very difficult. So one, one highlight that I want to talk about in this war was the Tet Offensive. The Tet Offensive took place in, uh, around the Chinese New Year in 1968. And what happened was that the North, the Northern Viet Cong, Viet Minh, made a, tr a big invasion of the South. They committed, they threw everything they had at the South, and they took six major cities and a hundred small villages and towns. What, within one week, oh, and they also got to Saigon. They took the, they were right at the, the U.S. Embassy. Within one week's time, the South with the U.S. allies and the other uh, troops that were involved pushed them back, recaptured all the cities, most of the towns and hamlets, and so this was actually a devastating loss for the North Vietnamese because they lost 40,000 of their best troops. They had lost a lot of supplies and, and war material. This was a devastating blow. Here's the interesting thing about this, though. The, the media, the American press, portrayed the Tet Offensive as a devastating loss for the U.S. And since it was portrayed that way, and there was no counter um, analysis that the public was aware of, the, the tide began to turn against um, the whole war effort. At this point, we see more student protests. We see a lot of opposition to the war. We see uh, um, American soldiers returning from the front being attacked by anti-war anti uh, demonstrators, being charged that they're baby killers, that, that they're, you know, they've done horrible things. By the way, the reason I put on our website that um, home movie video, I scanned that in from um, Major Paoletti. Who, I, it, it's a different view of the war that you'll never see um, 
unless you see something like this. It's, it's not the usual ugly American in this war, and it shows how so many of the soldiers were trying to help the Vietnamese people, helping the villages, help protect them from this devastating guerrilla warfare. So, ultimately, LBJ decides not to run again. He knows he's not electable. Nixon wins that 1964 election. I mean, I'm sorry, the 1968 election. 64 was when Johnson won against Goldwater. Um, he's, he has an idea how to win the war. He wants to attack the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The Ho Chi Minh Trail, and you can look on your uh, website, I've put up a map, maybe you can see it here as well. The Ho Chi Minh Trail runs parallel to Vietnam. Vietnam, of course, hugs the coast. And it g runs from, it runs through Laos, parallel to North, the v North Vietnamese border, all the way down to the South Vietnamese border, through Cambodia. And this was the way in which Russian supplies and Red Chinese supplies and the men were filtering down and being able to, under the cover of the jungles, attack the South. It was, by the way, a horrific war. It's, as I said, it was horrible the way the American soldiers were treated when they came home. It was also a devastating war, a horrible war with huge losses for the Vietnamese people. I want to say that Nixon ran into big trouble after his re-election campaign in 1972. It's the whole Watergate story. He was severely damaged with Congress. Congress cut off funds. The U.S. wasn't able to conduct that war in the way um, in the way that Nixon wanted. He did have help, diplomatic help from Kissinger. I'll, I'll, we'll be look, taking a, a look at that. But ultimately what happened was that there was a ceasefire in 1973, after Nixon was Nixon gets kicked out of office with the Watergate scandal, and Congress, uh, uh, an, an opposing Congress under Ford, who becomes the president, uh, Gerald Ford, refuses to give aid to South Vietnam. And so, even though the ceasefire the ceasefire has taken place, the country is still divor divided, North and South. There's no aid coming in to support the South Vietnamese, and ultimately the North invades again, as they had done years before. They capture Saigon. That we have this spectacle of the U.S. embassy being evacuated from the roof of the embassy by helicopter. We see this rush to the gates of any South Vietnamese person or family member who had thought to be sympathetic to the U.S., if they don't get out, either by helicopter or some other means, they're going to be summarily executed. And we have this scene, this horrific scene, of the last helicopter leaving and leaving these people behind to face they're in a desperate situation, so desperate that many of them become the boat people where they try to escape by water. Thousands, hundreds of thousands die that way. It was not America's finest hour. So that's a quick overview. It, I think it's a subject that we need to take a close look at because, of, as I've said, there are various interpretations of this war and so many interesting aspects of it, too. So keep studying. Um, I, I know that you're doing a good job at home. This isn't how we intended to start this semester, but we're going to finish strong. We're going to do the best we can. See you next time.